SpaceX Raptor 2 keeps exploding, pushing back the first orbital flight of the powerful Starship even further. In the last episode, we explained about 33 Raptor engine testing and how it's a big problem for SpaceX and Elon Musk. We received a lot of comments related to, should have used 33 Merlins, bro, or why does SpaceX have to make it so complicated? However, there's some wild secrets behind Elon Musk methane guzzling super rocket. And that's why you're hearing today's episode, Elon Musk real reason for developing the insane Raptor 2 engine. Welcome back to Alpha Tech, and we want to take time to thank you for your continued support of the channel. Let's grab your favorite drink and dive into today's interesting topic. The Raptor engine has been in development for the better part of a decade, going through a number of iterations. At its core, it's like other engines, burning chemical fuel to produce thrust. But what Musk is upgrading for Raptor 2 is really burning scientists' minds. Most visible, its use of liquid oxygen and methane, something largely unprecedented in the rocket industry. And its innovative design means it just might be SpaceX's ace in the hole when it comes to exploring the solar system. Honestly, there's no other rocket engine capable of producing as much energy out of liquid methane and liquid oxygen as the Raptor engine, and making it more reusable with little to no refurbishment is the idea. That's definitely going to help their business case if they can just fly it over and over. Reusability is a key aspect, and Musk has said each engine needs to be capable of flying up to a thousand times to support the ambitious operations of Starship. And that's a major challenge. The most reused engines in space exploration history were the main engines on the space shuttle, which flew up to only a few dozen times each. SpaceX's existing engine is called Merlin, which is used on its operational Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. But Raptor heralds a significant improvement. One is that it has double the thrust of its predecessor thanks to a much higher pressure, 380,000 pounds of thrust at sea level versus 190,000 pounds, despite being similar size. An important problem with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets is it's not rapidly reusable. After every flight, this rocket needs extensive refurbishment before SpaceX can use it again. The primary reason is the fuel of the Falcon rocket is kerosene, RP-1. When RP-1 fuel burns, it generates a lot of carbon, coating the engine components with coke and limiting potential for reuse. Cleaner burning methane engines are expected to improve that turnaround time and reduce launch cost even further. And the other being cost. Because methane is cheap, a passive cooling system is enough to store methane in liquid form. Significantly denser than hydrogen, storable for a more extended period, it doesn't leak, doesn't require insulation on the fuel tank, and the rocket design is less complex compared to a hydrogen-powered rocket. The cost of propellant for liquid rockets is such a trivial proportion of the total launch cost, says space consultant Rand Simberg. With reusable vehicles, we want to get to the point at which we care what the propellant cost. In airlines, typically 35% of the total operating cost are fuel. With a rocket, it's less than 1% traditionally. This could be crucial because the number of Raptor engines SpaceX is looking to build is immense, to say the least. Each Starship vehicle is designed to fly with six Raptor engines, along with 33 on the current Super Heavy rocket. That's a total of 39 per launch. SpaceX's biggest rocket so far, the Falcon Heavy, launches with 28 Merlins. With that number of launches SpaceX is planning for Starship and Super Heavy, their rate of production will have to increase significantly. This is vital that SpaceX's goal of regular trips to and from Mars with Starship, allowing it to be almost self-sufficient in terms of fuel. On Mars, we can create methane using CO2 and frozen water in the ground. This has been the holy grail of solar system access for humanity. Because when you can refuel in space, now all of a sudden, your propellant doesn't have to come from Earth. Besides, Raptor also uses what's known as a full-flow stage combustion engine, only the third engine in history to employ this technique. The previous two attempts at such an engine, one in the Soviet Union in the 1960s and another in the U.S. in the early 2000s, never made it beyond testing. Such an engine has two independent pumps for oxidizer and fuel, spun by two turbines powered by their own dedicated pre-burner. But unlike the gas generator cycle, the fuel is burned twice, once at lower efficiency in the pre-burner to produce energy for spinning the turbines, and again at maximum efficiency in the combustion chamber to produce thrust. While an exceptionally difficult engine to design and test, it completely eliminates the waste of the gas generator cycle. 
But increased fuel efficiency isn't the only advantage of this design. For example, the seals separating the turbine and pump are less critical, and there's no concern of contaminating the pump liquid. Ultimately, they're going to the same place. In addition, the fact that the fuel and oxidizer enter the combustion chamber as gases further improves engine efficiency over conventional designs which spray them in as liquids. The individual turbines on a full flow stage combustion engine also tend to run cooler and at a lower pressure than the single turbine used in the conventional rocket engine. This puts less stress on the turbine impellers and should allow them to run for longer before they have to be inspected and replaced. Given SpaceX's focus on reusability, this is likely seen as just as important as increased fuel efficiency. The end result is that Raptor has a much higher pressure than Merlin, about three times greater, making it the highest pressured rocket engine in existence and leading to its aforementioned larger thrust than Merlin, despite its similar size. Now compared to the generation of Raptor 1.5, which successfully landed the SN15 prototype, Raptor 2 has also been greatly upgraded. Compared to the original Raptor, Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed, transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree look to a significantly cleaner look. Many valves were also combined into valve plates, helping further simplify plumbing. By removing a large amount of these components, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat proof, a clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by about six tons. Raptor 2 also has fewer flanges than on the original versions of Raptor. Flanges are great during prototyping when parts need to be swapped out, but they increase mass and increase pressure losses throughout the engine. This is a clear example of Musk, the best part is no part mantra. During the wider throat and increased chamber pressure, Raptor has gained a significant amount of thrust. Raptor 1 produced 185 tons of thrust, while Raptor 2 produces 230 tons of thrust. Another change made to Raptor 2 to further decrease the engine's mass is the removal of the torch igniters in the main combustion chamber. Instead of relying on redundant torch igniters, the well-mixed hot oxygen gas and hot CH4 gas act hypergolic under the high temperature and the pressure of the main combustion chamber. All of the above benefits are more than enough for Elon Musk to bet all on this new type of engine. Let's hope miracles happen soon. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support is the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.